there is a large Bangladeshi community in Britain, more visibly in East London. How important are they in the political and social context of Britain today? I've got many friends within the Bangladeshi community in Britain, not, not least because the, the, they tend to be supporters of my husband's party and have been very loyal supporters of, of him over the years. And also because as a lawyer, I uh, actually was involved briefly representing the employees of the BCCI bank that, uh, that to collapsed in the early 1990s. And many of them, the British employees, actually came from backgrounds from Bangladesh. So I, I know a lot about that community and the, the struggles they have had, but also how they um, are contributing to our society. And um, many of them now making progress, but many of them came from very, very poor areas in Bangladesh. And uh, with that background, I think it's sometimes been hard for them to integrate. Often the women don't speak English. And one of the, the important things we've tried to do is to help and support those communities, and particularly to help them learn English and to help them uh, and their children integrate into our society. Today's Britain also has a large Muslim population. What do you think about their significance in British society? Well, I was talking before about how Tony and I came together partly because of our mutual interest in, in, in religion and, 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 and belief in God. And actually, I think um, I was partly responsible for my husband's interest in the Muslim faith uh, because uh, in, when he was still leader of the opposition and before he went into number 10, uh, I have a, a very close friend who is a, a QC now, but who had, at that time, uh, he, he was a barrister, and he was brought up in the north of England as I was, coming actually from Pakistan in this case, but from a Muslim background, and he took Tony and I to our, on our first visit to a mosque when we visited the mosque at Regent's Park. Now, of course, uh, I think uh, Tony said on many occasions as Prime Minister, uh, some members of the British Muslim community presented him with a Quran, and since then he has read not only his Bible every night as he does, but also from the Quran every night. Can we talk a little bit about the Middle East situation, uh, especially Gaza situation? It's been bad for the last few days, and actually it has been pretty bad for a while now. And I'm aware that Tony Blair is still pretty active uh, with regard to international politics and Middle East. Uh, what prospects do you see for a peaceful Middle East in near future? Well, I, I'm certainly not um, uh, unbiased in this, but uh, when Tony, I, I must be one of the few women in the world whose husband gives up a difficult, demanding and even dangerous job as Prime Minister of Great Britain and takes on an equally difficult and demanding and, and, and dangerous job as the Middle East uh, the quartet envoy and um, I, I've been to uh, the, the Middle East myself on many occasions and since Tony also I have been since Tony has been appointed envoy now I think there are a few people better qualified than, than Tony because of his understanding of, of the Muslim faith uh, of his his his, his uh, sympathy for, for, for that population, but also his understanding and sympathy with our Jewish friends and with uh, the Christian uh, community as well. And of course, he had that wonderful practice in the Northern Ireland peace process. Um, all of that, I think, has told him that persistence, determination, and, um, and an openness to others uh, certainly help if you're trying to bring communities together.